When you look at something like this, this is a cylinder head to a V12. Now this is one cylinder head. There's actually two in this particular engine. And this is just the top of the engine. So you can see how intimidating it looks when you start looking at an, a vehicle engine. So let's look at a more simplified engine. Here is one that just want to briefly mention this one has a doesn't have an overhead cam. It has a regular old fashioned type cam with push rods, rock arms and stuff like that. That is kind of out of date. So let's look at an overhead cam, a very simple engine overhead cam. So this engine is called a cutaway and it actually has, or it's a cutaway of an engine and it actually has parts of the engine cut away so you can see inside. Normally all this will be enclosed and you can't see it. This one has a crank so I can cycle through just like it's running. Here's the spark plug. Now the spark plug uh, is part of a whole electrical system with a timing system so that way the spark plug ignites at a specific time and we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but so that's a, a separate system. You have a spark system, you have a fuel delivery system, you have exhaust system, uh, but this is all attached to the engine. So some of this stuff you can take off like, a, like the exhaust system, it will still run, but the fuel delivery system, you would need a carburetor or a uh, fuel injection type system in order for it to come in. So basically engines run on air. So air and fuel mixture, but the air is vital. So you have this massive amount of air flowing through the engine. So it goes in through the engine and we'll show what it does inside and then out. Uh, so you have an inlet here and then you have an outlet here. And so that there's a flow of air. So you have to understand that this air is constantly flowing through the engine. The fuel is very minuscule compared to the airflow. So that's why I say engines run on air mostly. So we have this uh, intake and exhaust flowing through and basically what makes it flow through is this piston. So the piston as it turns it will suck in air from the side with the fuel delivery system, the carburetor or fuel injection, and it will suck in a mixture of air and fuel. If there's too much fuel or too much air, it's not going to run or run properly. So the fuel mixture with air has to be fairly precise. And it's the more precise it is, the more efficient the engine is and more powerful it is. The less precise, then you know, it runs rough or it doesn't run at all. You've heard of an engine flooding possibly. Well, that means it's getting too much gas. So there's these two valves on top, the intake and exhaust valve. On this particular one, it has an overhead cam with one lobe, which is very rare. Usually there's an, a, a separate lobe. Uh, it's like a little bump that opens and closes the exhaust and intake valves. So normally you'd have two lobes on the camshaft that will open the intake and exhaust valves. Think of like a hose with a nozzle that you squeeze and you get air a water flow. Think of it that way. These valves are the same thing, except for instead of water coming out of the hose, you're allowing air to go in and out of the cylinder. So inside the cylinder is a piston. So you can see that's very easy to see going up and down within the cylinder. And what that does is draw, when it comes down, it sucks in, as it comes down, the cam lobe opens the valve for the intake and it sucks in air into the cylinder. The air and fuel mixture will be in there. Then the valves close. And then the, the piston comes up, compresses that air and fuel mixture that's when the spark plug ignites at the top, what they call top dead center. When that piston is as high as it can go and it can't go any higher, that's called top dead center. And that's the maximum amount of compression with both valves closed. It squeezes that air 
and it's the air fuel mixture, then ignites the spark plug and makes that air fuel mixture expand like an explosion. And it expands out and pushes the, the, the piston down. Okay, so the, the piston, the reason why it goes up and down is because it has momentum on a crank shaft. The crank shaft is where the piston is connected using a connecting rod to the crank shaft. And you can see this one has counterweights to, to keep the engine you know, balance so it's not shaking so much while it's running. So as it's spinning, the connecting rod lifts and lowers the piston, but it's in a rotational manner. So it builds a momentum, especially with the counterweights and the, the weight of the connecting rod and all that. So when that explosion happens, crankshaft is going to not only allow it to pull down in the correct fashion, it's going to push and create force into the engine, into the transmission, and ultimately to the wheels on a vehicle. On a lawnmower, it's going to be a, to spin the blade. So that's where the power comes in. When the expansion of the air-fuel mixture comes in, when it happens with the spark plug, it expands, pushes the piston down, and turns that crank. Just like I can turn this crank here, well, the engine turns the crank instead of me, my hand turning it when it's running. It's going to push, 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 push based on the explosion and pushing down. Okay, so, so that happens. It pushes it down. Once it reaches the bottom, the maximum amount of energy has is, is been converted to the crankshaft. Then the exhaust valve will open up. And once the exhaust valve opens up, it basically, on this one, it opens up at the same time as, as the piston's coming back up. It opens up and pushes out that, that exhaust air. So the air, all the fuel is burnt, and there's nothing but ash and just carbon monoxide and different things in this air in the cylinder. So now it's going to, the piston's coming up, but this time it's not compressing anything. It's just pushing out the air through the exhaust valve. So the exhaust valve opens up and it pushes that air out. So now your exhaust is flowed out. Once it goes to top dead center, the intake valve can now open and the piston can come down and pull in fresh fuel air mixture into the cylinder and repeat the whole process. And this is constantly going and that's called a revolution. One revolution is that, that full cycle of pulling it in, compressing it, exploding it, the power stroke, and then the exhaust stroke. That's the four strokes of a four-stroke engine. So this one, the overhead cam, you can see this little belt. And the belt runs on the, drive, the, 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 the crankshaft here. And the crankshaft is connected to the little um, camshaft. Now on the big engine, you can see uh, now Maybe you can notice it has a place for teeth to go. And you can, as that turns, it turns all these lobes on this large cylinder head. That's a big, that's a long camshaft. And it's opening and closing all these valves. Um, so this is a very simple one lobe, one piston, two valves. You have the crankshaft down here, camshaft up here. Up here. This is what they call a timing belt or a timing chain. Um, a lot of vehicles have a chain instead of a belt. So if somebody, you know, you ever mentioned like, I got to change my timing belt. This timing belt has to be changed. This is what that is. And it's usually enclosed in the engine. So you don't actually see it. Uh, you may see other belts on the outside, like an alternator belt, belt or fan belt on the outside of the engine. But this is usually within the engine. This is a belt or a chain. Chains are typically made to last the lifetime of the engine. Belts have to be changed uh, throughout the life of the engine, depending on the, the vehicle and all. A four-stroke engine has an intake stroke. So this is where the intake valve opens, allowing the fuel and air mixture in. It sucks it into the cylinder. Now, at this point, 
when the piston's at its bottom, the intake valve closes, and both valves are closed on the compression stroke. So this pushes up, squeezes the air, since both valves are closed, squeezes it until it gets to the top, ignites the spark plug. Now this is the power stroke. It pushes down using the power of the explosion from the fuel air mixture and the compression. Then it, once it's ignited, it pushes the piston down. And that's the power. So that's actually delivering the power to whatever you're doing, the engine powering the device, the car or whatever, to the wheels. Now we have the exhaust stroke. The exhaust valve opens up at this point. Now the cylinder is going to push out the exhaust gases, the leftover stuff that was in the cylinder, the burnt fuel and all that stuff. And once that delivers out, now we start off again with the intake stroke. So that four strokes, the intake, the compression, the power, and the exhaust strokes. What's not included in this example is your oil delivery system. So there's typically a pump that pumps oil to everywhere. Uh, inside the connecting rod, there's oil that gets delivered here, around the cylinder walls, um, around everywhere. There's a complete oil delivery system. There's a cooling system. In this particular case, there, this is air cooled, so you have these fins that act as a heat sink, so air flow will flow past this and cool this aluminum part of the engine around the cylinder. Uh, but most like vehicles and stuff will have a liquid cooled, so there's actually um, a fluid that they call it antifreeze, but um, it, it doesn't boil as easy as well. But it flows around all different places in the engine and transfer the heat out to a radiator, which releases the heat away from the engine. So that's not, not shown here. Also the fuel delivery, uh, you would have a, a carburetor or fuel injection. So you just get the fuel air mixture right to get into the intake. So that just allows it to pull it into the engine. It preps that and then that way the engine can pull it in. And the exhaust system is basically pipes with some you know, uh, mufflers and catalytic converters, that kind of thing. So those are the, some of the things that are not shown here. Um, of course, modern engines have a lot of electronics, monitoring, sensors, and all that stuff to make sure everything's running properly. But this is just the very basic engine. But these are the same principles that even modern engines have. They're just more complex, have more valves, have more electronics. There's more things going on, more cylinders, of course. But, uh, but this gives you the basic idea of what's actually going on inside of the engine when you start it up and it's making noise and it's doing things for you, driving you, or you're mowing the lawn, that kind of thing. So thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.